description of the super street. Um, there are other drawings such as the T intersection with the super street, a three leg is what they call that. But 99% of the time the super street is going to be this drawing here on the left. Who has seen these type of stick figures before? Okay. So these can be confusing for some who haven't seen them because <clears throat> they don't show any roadway lanes or anything like that. Uh, I'm sure others draw these types of drawings. Uh, I, I think the only person that draws these is Joe Homer. They used to confuse the mess out of me in class. But uh, basically the idea here is we have the arterial running east and west. And we have the side street running north and south. And 99% of the time what's going to happen is we're going to restrict, well all the time we're going to restrict the left and the through from the side street. So you'll notice we come up from the north, I can only turn right. So if I want to go through, I have to turn right, go to a U-turn opening downstream, turn left and then turn right to go through. Okay, the next presentation will follow on to this also. If you want to turn left, you turn right, go to the U-turn. If you're at a signalized intersection, you wait for the light. If not, you go when you get a gap, and then you turn left and you go. Go on westbound. Okay, the idea here is, is to reduce the number of signal phases. By reducing the number of signal phases, I can put that green time to the through movements on the arterial, which obviously is a good thing, right? Um, we get a lot of throughput, we increase the life of the arterial without having to put an interchange in and so forth. There's also additional benefits of the super street that are very unique compared to others. I'll talk about those in a little bit. When you have a tight weave, for instance, we have one of these in North Carolina signalized site where um, there is a interchange nearby and a signal nearby that comes off and it doesn't have enough time to weave over to get to this left because it does allow the left from the main line you can actually restrict that left. That's the only good reason that I can come up with to restrict the left though. Okay, you, you want to allow that left if you can. It doesn't hurt anything to allow that left. Okay, so basically we redirect the left turn and through movements from the side streets. Um, the biggest plus that I think comes out of this, obviously we have fewer conflict points which is a great safety benefit which we'll, we're going to quantify in this project. But really, the best benefit is it acts like two one-way streets. Who in here have, rides through one-way streets regularly through a downtown area, for instance? Okay, so you know when you go, say, north-south is the predominant movement or east-west is the predominant movement, you catch those lights perfectly as you go through. You get nice progression. Terrible. It's not nearly as good as, as one-way streets. This acts like two one-way streets. There might as well be a set of skyscrapers right through the median here. Okay, so the results basically found... Um, that the travel time along the major arterial um, reduced significantly. We also saw that the left turns, which by the way all but Chapel Hill, the Chapel Hill site had that left turn from the arterial that was allowed. There was a weave problem at the Chapel Hill site so that was not allowed. Very unusual to do that though. So we saw reduced travel time for the major left turn movements also at the two sites where but we did see increased travel time for that major left where it was not allowed. It had to go up through the intersect, main intersection, do a U-turn, and then come back and make a right, which makes sense that that would be increased. Then the minor road, we did see minor through and left turn movements negatively impacted. So I'll just quickly show those. Okay, so the first two sites here on the top, Okay, those, those are the single lane, or excuse me, the single super street sites. And then the ones below are the five super streets that are along the corridor. And you basically see that at low volume situations, we don't, this is average travel time, by the way, for all the movements by traffic volume. You don't see a huge improvement with the super street, but you see when we start getting lots and lots of traffic, look at the improvements, how much they increase. Okay, so the, the basic operational findings, um, the super street outperformed the conventional for overall average travel time. The largest travel, largest travel time savings were during high demand, which is what I just showed. The further you went right on the table, the more benefit you saw. Okay, the major road had positive impacts. That keeps with the definition of an arterial. It's an artery. We want to get throughput on that thing. And then the minor road was negatively impacted, but not as much, but there's also not as much traffic over there. So you kind of have to weigh that. Um, there is more capacity, it adds more years to the intersection's useful life. Um, that is one of the big selling points that we try to sell in North Carolina when we have our public meetings is that the alternative is we need to go in here and put 
um, a divided facility in. It's going to be very expensive. We can get 15 to 20 years maybe extra life out of our arterial without having to go put this great separated solution in.